Welcome back to The Sim Project, everybody. Uh, so if you watched the last video on the G1000, you know I talked about this as being the next video in the series. This is the GCU 475 keyboard. Let me get you a better look at that. Now it's not powered up right now. Uh, this is another Flight Sim DIY product. Again, like I say, I bought the circuit boards and everything for this as well. Same as I did last time. Uh, same Arduino board that runs all of the modules so you know when you do this I've just bought three of them so I've got you know one extra now as well um, but yeah super happy um, I will uh, I'll power it up here let's just see what it looks like with the backlight lit um, all the keys light something else I didn't realize and uh, I haven't decided whether I'm going to reprint this or not the outer uh, bezel framework I printed that in black PLA and stopped with a couple layers to go and switched the filament to white to get the uh, white around there um, and after I put it all together, I knew the keys were backlit, so those like uh, the G1000 and the 1500 I've done, and same with the radio panel, I printed those on the resin printer in white, and then spray painted them black, and then you take a little file and you sand it off, and you know, it lights to the back on the switch so you can actually see them. The, uh, didn't realize it when I looked at it, when I, when I did this, you know, try and read all the instructions, I guess, before you get started on a project. The, uh, there is backlighting on this, and I don't know how well that'll show up, but around the map switch right there, there is some wording, and on the FMS control over here, there's uh, just the word, or the letters FMS as well there. Uh, if you do the same deal, you print this in white, spray paint it black, and then uh, sand that off, that will light up the ring around the map switch for you, and write up F the FMS wording. Um, I'm not really sure if I'm going to reprint that. It's uh, to reprint that. It was this uh, little guy because there's a lot of in or not a, a lot of support in the back of it to do it. It was about a six and a half hour print on my Ender three. Um, so you know to reprint it and then take it all back apart because I kind of realized the backlighting thing once I put it together. So I may leave it the way it is. Anyways, um, super happy with it. It looks super good. You can hear the buttons. All the buttons are working there. Um, Unlike the next step up from this, the 478, which gives you some autopilot controls, gives you uh, a heading and altitude, and and uh, I believe it's a course for your nav radio. I can't remember the other dial on there. Um, this doesn't have that. This is just strictly map control for your multifunction display and the FMS interface, and of course the keyboard. So with the G1000, instead of you know hitting the FMS button or the flight plan button and then spinning the knobs around in one character at a time, you go to this and this gives you the keyboard to type things in. Um, it's great. So here's a unit on Flight Sim DIY's website. It's $8.99 US to buy it. Um, I did buy this. This is not a sponsored video by any means. This is just strictly a free plug. Um, I love what, what Dave and the other guys over there are doing. This is just awesome stuff. The quality is just super great general aviation stuff. Yeah, if you want to build something like this, check it out. That's the, uh, the unit. There's the circuit boards, you know, 15 bucks for the circuit boards. So, you know, $25, there's that. Uh, Arduino's like 30 bucks for the Arduino. Um, the push buttons, like I said in the last video, I buy these on eBay and they link all these part numbers in their download package. So check that out. It's a really nice PDF they give you with all the part numbers and everything. Um, I buy the switches on eBay. They're like eight or nine cents a piece when you buy more than a hundred. Now you figure there's a, uh, a full 26 letter alphabet here plus the uh, 1 to 0 numbers so we're 35 you know 38 switches plus plus is a bunch across the bottom I think something to total I counted I think it was 41 buttons in total so buying a pack of 100 you're gonna have some to do a G1000 if you want to do it so it's well worth your money buy the pack of 100 it's good now like I was saying in the G1000 uh, this also uses the same map control switch that little uh, four-way micro joystick with the rotary and a push, they are like 25 bucks on eBay or something like that. Um, it's only one place I've been able to find that has them in stock. Uh, and yeah, so they kind of got the market cornered. If you do find like a DigiKey or Electrosonic, they carry them as well. DigiKey, I had to buy 100 of them, and it was like a 22-week lead. And Electrosonic was, uh, I had to buy like five or six, and they were the same deal. They were like a 23 or 24-week lead time. So... You buy them on eBay, spend the 25 bucks or whatever it is, and you'll have it. And I think when I got them, it took like six weeks to get them. Um, and then uh, for as far as the FMS uh, dual rotary encoder with the push button, um, it's the exact same ones they use on the G1000. 
the G1000 into the TBM mod because of course it takes this into account plus with the autopilot like in the last video I said I'm building um, it's the same one as the G1000 so if you need five for the G1000 well throw an extra one in and uh, there you go so yeah um, let me put some power to this so you can see the backlights and then we'll put it on the sim so we get power to it just a, I have a 12 volt power supply with uh, just a little break off like that uh, works really well I think this is what actually I may use to power my whole GA panel with it's uh, it's like a 25 or 30 watt at 12 volts, so it's a pretty, pretty decent sized uh, power supply for what I need. Um, we're just running a bunch of LEDs, so it shouldn't be an issue. But that's it. I don't know how well the camera will focus on that. I have, uh, I'm using a different camera tonight. I did find that uh, the GoPro picks up the lights too much in here. This one, looking at it so far, it looks like it might be a little better. But uh, yeah, so that's all lit up nice and neat. A couple of the buttons I do have to do, and I'll uh, zoom in on that. I don't know if you can see that, the menu button up top. I need to uh, take the file and just file a little more paint off it. Um, other than that, I got most of them pretty good on this one. Uh, and I think the enter key's got to be done as well. So yeah, that's that. And you can see those backlights in the top there. Some of those, I'm not sure if those are showing up or not. But that's the backlight around the uh, nav switch. So let's uh, throw this on the sim, and I'll show you what it does. Okay, so I'll give you a quick rundown here just with Moby Flight. I'm just learning Moby Flight, so I can basically add a new module and upload parameters to that module. So do not take this as, as a, a tutorial on how to use Moby Flight. Um, they have a Discord, they have a website. If you want to learn about Moby Flight, visit their Discord, visit their website, visit their YouTube channel. All kinds of great videos on there. Anyways, here's what we got. Um, so this is the other module, and ignore the lettering, that's the wrong one. That's from my little 750. I built a video up over here. Uh, on how I did that, and that was last year. That's my first real build I did for the uh, sim. It was really neat, little touch screen for things like the Honda Jet and uh, Vision Jet, things like that. Uh, anyways, so there's the this unit. Now I will say before we get started, make sure you use a quality USB cable with the uh, um, Arduino units. There, if you ever got used Android Auto or Apple CarPlay in your car, you know it doesn't work very well if you use a cheap cable if you've got a, a wired system. Um, same goes for these things. They do power through the USB, so they need a pretty decent cable. So I've got that set up. So there's our unit right there. So we're going to select it. First of all, they want us to do is update the firmware. It's a Mega 2560, so we'll do that. We'll let it do its thing. There we go. It was successful updated. Now it's showing us that. Now I want to open a configuration file. So we're going to open, and I've already saved it. There's the, the G, GCU 475. That's it right there. So we'll open that and you can see all the, the buttons and everything that's got already pre-programmed and everything for it ready to go. So we're going to upload that. Yes, we want to upload. Really do want to upload it. That is correct. And the upload is finished and it's good to go. So we'll close that off there. Now I've already opened this file up. Um, this is for the backlights and stuff right here. And if you go to input, there's all of our keys. And as you can see, these files are nice because it's already pre-assigned for us. So open that window up, and as you can see, AS1000, that's the Asobo 1000, G1000, uh, Control Pad T. And I'll show you this in a second. The only default aircraft with a keyboard right now is the new Cirrus SR22 update. Um, I've loaded up Beechcraft to show you that you don't actually have to use this on an aircraft that's got... A keyboard like this here's so we'll close that so we're happy with that so we will run that and we'll kick over to the sim and we'll bounce up full screen here and we'll turn the aircraft on and we'll actually we'll go ahead and start things up here too just to keep power on it the G1000 or the, the 1500 connected and uh, I think this camera worked well over there it looks like I come over here and I think the the monitor is starting to uh, play with the auto light balance so let's get a little off so there we go so we're at the ground at Kingston get my keyboard back here I've disabled the zoom on the mouse wheel I found it with pain so we'll just use a keyboard and zoomed in okay so we've uh, this is working nice so there's our flight plan 
We want to enter our waypoint, so we're leaving from Kingston, which is Charlie Yankee Golf, Quebec. So, Charlie, and I've got this sitting on top of my yoke so the GoPro can pick it up here. It would be a lot nicer if, if I had the backlight working too. And I'm, the only thing I don't like, I wish this was a quirky keyboard like your phone and your computer and things like that. So there's Kingston, so we'll, we'll do the enter. So I haven't picked a runway yet, but let's, uh, let's say we're gonna leave runway one. That's pretty much the common at Kingston. So enter, enter. Clear, perfect. So uh, Watertown VOR is where we're going first. That's uh, Art, uh, Alfa Romeo Tango. And I do absolutely need a better light here. Um, that is not it, that's in Turkey. Well, let's see if we hit enter, see what it does. Okay, so it gives us, so now from here we take our our FMS encoder on the, uh, the larger and the inner one. Uh, Northeast USA, that's where Watertown is. We're gonna select that. And then Syracuse is Sierra Yankee Romeo. Sierra Yankee Romeo for their VOR. And again, it doesn't come up, but we hit enter. Um, oh, that's, I see what I did there. I made a mistake there, so we'll clear that out. Sierra Yankee Romeo. There we go, Syracuse. Hit enter, Syracuse, Northeast United States. Yes, VOR, do that. Now we come down to our destination. And we're going to Kilo Sierra Yankee Romeo Syracuse Hancock enter I don't know which runway I'm gonna use this time um, let's see what it gives us here let's uh, well let's say runway 10 hit the enter excuse there we go boom done we're ready to go there's our flight plan now if we want to pan around on this now I do have to uh, I gotta glue this knob or something on for the uh, the range controller. Um, I had to make a couple small adjustments to get them to fit properly. I don't think I still got this one deep enough, so I'll either glue it on a little bit or reprint it and add a little more material into it. Because as you, I don't know if the GoPro is seeing that here. Um, the GoPro can see that's it's kind of hard to see, it, but that that's a little loose on there, and I can I can take it right off. So yeah, so there's that. So we can scroll down on the map if we want to. Take a look at where we're going. We want to zoom out on it. There's our zoom out. Zoom back in, and then of course we hit the uh, push button. Which the push button doesn't work on this, like I say, but that that button's too loose, so it's not seeing it. Um, other stuff we can do. So let's take a look at the chart. Now this will be where the uh, the G1500 and the 1000 come into play because we can go to charts here and the load. I've got the Navigraph package for flight sim. So there's, uh, there's our departure chart, and again, same deal. So we can zoom in and out on that. If you're looking at a bigger place and you wanted uh, a bigger taxi chart, you can scroll around on that. So we'll back up with that. Um, let's pick our departure. So uh, hit the procedure. So select uh, departure. And unfortunately, there's none for Kingston. So. We don't have that option. So we'll the, uh, select the approach, shall we? Or just, you know, select the approach, runway 10 in Syracuse. Here we go, ILS, we'll take the ILS 10. Um, we're gonna go through Syracuse. And, uh, well, we can put turn the minimums on, so we're gonna go uh, barometric pressure, and we wanna be 250 feet above the ground sort of deal. And for our minimums, and then we can pick our sequence where we want to enter at. And for now, we'll just load it. We know it's not GPS approved yet, that's fine, whatever. Boom, and there it goes. You can see it's loaded. So, that is the Garmin keyboard. So, that is the uh, 475 keyboard from Flight Sim DIY. Um, total cost, like I said, with you know. 25 bucks there, 30 bucks for the Arduino. Barely $50 into this one, truthfully. This was this was pretty uh, pretty economical to build this one. A pretty quick build too. Um, however, there is a course. There's a lot of solder points in the back of that. Nearly 40 keys on here. Each key's got six legs on it. You got uh, two for the light, and then each there's the switch is a double pull 
switch. So, you know, there's four wires for the switch, two common, two switched. So, yeah, so quite a bit of soldering there. Probably, probably took me three and a half hours to solder all those together. Um, there's some, I don't know if you can see it, there's some standoffs in there. Because, of course, and I've got some video I'll throw up here of this going together. Um, it's all daughter boarded with uh, some pins. Everything slides together and you build up on top of it. So, so yeah, it's a bunch of bunch of soldering, a bunch of little parts, but yeah, like, like I say, under under $50 to put this together all done and said. And uh, as you can see from the video, yeah, it works really sweet. Once you figure out how to work Moby Flight and get that working. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please give the video a like, um, hit the subscribe button, throw a quick comment in. Anyways, that's all for the uh, keyboard. And you know, that knob fell off again. It's in my hand right here. So now that we know it works, I can put a little shot of glue on that and stick it on there and won't have to worry about it. But anyways, thanks for watching. I will see you next time.